Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Salah Khan YouTube channel. The topic that we've started is of liquid insulation. In the very first video, we saw a little introduction and the essential properties required for any liquid to be used as an insulation. In the next video, which is the previous one, we, we, we saw the mechanisms of breakdown that could be possible. And those were basically three in number. In this particular video, let's have a little general discussion on the transformer oil. In the gas, while we're studying the gas insulation, so we studied it through the application of a circuit breaker. Over here in the liquid insulation, the most common example of a liquid insulation and the most common application is what? It is a transformer oil. So this would just be a general video just talking about a transformer and transformer oil. Right? Yes. So we saw in the previous video, I told you that the, that the dielectric strength of a transformer oil is 15 kilovolts per millimeter or if you write it in per centimeter, so this is 150 kilovolt per centimeter. These are RMS values, right? Yes. Now what do you have is you have the routine maintenance of a transformer after six, uh, six months generally or yearly Generally, they do what when the season ends, the summer season when it ends, so they do the maintenance. So what do you have is you check for the dielectric strength. And how is it checked? So it has got a test cell where you have two electrodes and the liquid insulation is placed between them. The, 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 the electrodes may be spherical or maybe this sort of a Rogowski profile. Uh, a potential difference is applied which is increased generally at a rate of 1 kilovolt per second. Normally 1 kilovolt per second rate it is increased, right? And the distance or the spacing between these two electrodes D, this is generally 2.5 millimeter or it is 5 millimeter. So how do you calculate the dielectric strength then? The dielectric strength is calculated by finding the voltage, the breakover voltage we break down over the distance D. And breakover voltage is that voltage at which your spark occurs, the, 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 the uh, breakdown has occurred. And D is this distance, generally we place a 0.97 factor which is a non-uniformity factor over here. Fine? Yes. Let's say, let's say you have got your dielectric strength to be 13 kilovolt per millimeter. 13 kilovolt per millimeter. So the thing is that you can use it, but you have to think before. I told you in the previous video there is a limit which is 10 kilovolt per millimeter. The limit is what? The limit is 10 kilovolt per millimeter. If the dielectric strength happens to be greater than 10, then what do you have is you can use it. Whereas if this happens to be less than 10, you discard it. Greater than 10, you know, still you can enhance it a little. Right? Yes. Greater than 10, you can enhance it a little. And how do you do it? You, so you, 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 drain, you drain that oil. This, there is a process. You have got a special equipment for that which is filled with air. So you drain that oil first of all. So first of all it is heated. You provide latent heating so any trapped moisture is you know excluded first of all. And that air does not mix. Then it is taken to a filtering plant where any conducting material, any fibrous matter or any other thing carbon material is filtered out. The heating has its own time, the, the, the filtering has, gone its, has got its own time. Now, uh, you know, basically both type of the filtering is done. One is the actual filtering, the other one is the centrifugal filtering. After heating, after filtering, what do you do is now you again, you, you let it cool down first. After some time, you check for the dielectric strength again. Now, let's say the dielectric strength has increased. The dielectric strength will increase with this process. Let's say initially it was, it was 11, so now it has increased to, 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 to 13. Or maybe it was 9 previously, and now it has increased to 11, so you can use it. But if you do the purification, you do this process of heating and filtration, and still it happens to be less than 10, so then you have to discard it. 
and how is it discarded over here in your GSO and in your PESCO etc. So they, they sell it in the Shubha Bazaar and over there are experts who you know remove the colors from it and they again seal it into bottles into the canisters and what do you have is the same GSO or the same PESCO buys it back from them. So anyways that is not our topic of discussion let's talk about transformer. Transformer oil is quite expensive. What do you have in transformer? So basically you've got the core material you have the core material right then after on the core material are cylinders the the windings are in the form of a cylindrical structure first you have is the LD winding and above that you have the HD winding in between them wooden spacers are placed why wooden spacer so that uh, it does not degrade in oil the, the, the LD winding, ST winding and then they are all enclosed in a steel tank that is called a dead tank. Why? Because it's solidly grounded and it is filled with oil, your liquid insulation. So I told you that oil should have a proper viscosity that should enter each and every minute spaces inside of the steel tank. Right? Yes. Now, what do you have is you have, uh, you have uh, uh, the heating in the core material and that is produced by what? No, not I square R losses, not I square R losses in the core material. In the core material, you have eddy current losses, which are responsible for heating, right? You've got eddy current losses. Most of the heat is produced by these eddy current losses. 5%, about 5% of the total copper losses are your eddy current losses. These eddy current losses are responsible to raise the temperature. So, of course, the, the temperature of the oil will also raise right isn't it like this it is so during operation the temperature the transformer heats up this oil also have you know an additional property of cooling which we also discussed in the first video that this liquid should have a property of cooling so anyways there are methods again of cooling of the transformer so number one is of course the natural cooling natural cooling what happens is it happens with the help of with the process of convection and that is what when the oil heats up so uh, so it goes up when the temperature of the oil raises it goes up an air cushion is allowed it is not tightly sealed you have a space over there to to you know give room for the heated oil and then through the radiator pipes when it cools down so it comes down through the radiator pipes similarly you've got forced cooling where you have what in the forced oil cooling the 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 oil is pumped similarly in the forced air cooling you provide fans a draft fan is provided which you know helps in the uh, uh, in the cooling they are placed on the radiation placed to cool the radiation quickly in the power transformer you would have seen it in grids they are not in the you know in the street transformer the distribution transformer this sort of cooling is not present the forced cooling because uh, this much of heating does not occur you could say right yes so uh, there are uh, you know 10 to 20 feeders uh, which a transformer is supplying what do i have it over here i don't have anything so so there are a number of feeders that the, the transformer is supplying so if a transformer becomes faulty then all the feeders would be effective what do you do then so transformer is cooled by different methods i said that we have an air cushion when the when the oil heats up it goes upwards so there is an air cushion provided a space is provided for the for the heated oil so what happens when it goes up it expels air out of the transformer through a diaphragm vent yes through a diaphragm loaded vent that is fine but again when the oil cools down and it comes back down so what do you have it it has created a negative pressure inside the transformer which means that air will come in and now if air comes in so it has got dust particles right it has got dust particles and the most important thing is the moisture the most important thing is the moisture research has shown that presence of 0.01 percent of moisture in the transformer oil reduces its dielectric strength by 20 percent reduces a dielectric strength by 20 percent right 
Yes. So what they do? They basically provide breathers. This is a canopy valve where silica gel is present in the form of granules. Now silica gel has got the breather which is connected to its vent is filled with silica gel which is blue in color. This silica gel has got a property to absorb moisture. And when it absorbs moisture, its color changes. This is blue basically, sky blue in color, not navy blue. And it goes to the pinkish red wavelength then. So blue towards the reddish wavelength. If it becomes pink, this means that no further moisture it can absorb. So you have to change it. If not changed, so moisture will enter the transformer. And I've told you that presence of even 0.01% of moisture in the sample of the liquid will reduce its dielectric strength by 20%. For example, how much? So let's say, let's say 0 0.2, 20% is 0 0.2 of 15. So what will be the new value? The new value, uh, this will be, this comes out to be 3 kilovolt per millimeter. This is reduced. So which means what? That the new strength would be 15 minus 3 would be a 12 kilovolt per millimeter just by the presence of 0.01% of a moisture. This much it has reduced. Right? So this is this is not a good news. Similarly, the other bad news is that when transformer breathes, air comes in. Moisture is in the air, so air also comes in. What happens is air contains oxygen, which produces oxidation. Oxygen will produce oxidation. Transformer oil, I told you the chemical composition is that it basically are hydrocarbons. So this will contain carbon and hydrogen. Sulfur is also present, but that is in a very little amount. Carbon-carbon bond is a very strong bond. But when the transformer oil heats up, what do you have? Hydrogen is evolved as a gas hydrogen is evolved as a gas and the point from which it has left is highly vulnerable for oxygen to attack wherever oxygen sees a double bond it attacks over there so i told you the carbon carbon is a strong bond hydrogen is evolved as a gas when the temperature rises and what happens is now oxygen has got a point to attack on and it produces what is called oxidation. Secondly, when the temperature of the oil is high enough, carbon settles down because it is heavy. So it forms some sort of a sludge, right? So oxygen comes from outside, moisture comes from outside, hydrogen is evolved, carbon has settled down. So you know this is a problem, right? Yes, this is called a glue, not, a, not, not that uh, sticky glue this is some type of, of a waste called when you when you mix oil in water and you mix it for some you know so what do you have that that thing is called a glue so this 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 sludge that is formed the carbon that has settled down what what does it do is this will block the radiator pipes the inlet and the outlet pipes transformer piping which is used with the through which the oil circulates so it will block it right the inlets and outlets so there is no more circulation so what will happen the transformer will overheat so if precautionary measures are not taken this moisture and this oxygen will do what they will degrade your transformer oil the properties will not remain the same the transformer heats up because of the sludge formation. The dielectric strength is reduced based on how much moisture it has absorbed. Oxidation reduces the transformer oil. So all these things cause the transformer oil to age. So that is why the routine maintenance is carried out, especially in, a, in the power transformers in the grid. Then not carried out in the distribution transformer, the local distribution transformer. In that it may also happen due to overloads and what happens is that there is a you know a flash over between the HD winding and the tank in the distribution local transformers okay now we have a system in the transformer which is what that when this oil which is very ex you know expensive expensive and it is an important insulation over here so when this overheats we've got a relay called the buckles relay which gives us an alarm it has got two floating contacts, two floats and contacts which bridges and it gives an alarm. 
so basically i talked about that air cushion and when it overheats so that basically then you also have the buckles relay which gives you an alarm so it has basically two contexts on the first one when the temperature rages to a plus 65 degrees to a plus 65 degrees so what happens is it gives you an alarm at a plus 65 degrees it gives you an alarm so what happens is the sso is awakened and and he will do whatever is necessary he may turn on the uh, he may turn on the force cooling air draft fans or whatever right similarly he may trip some feeder whatever he has to do but if still not controlled if the temperature reaches a plus 80 degrees then it does what then the buckles relay operates and it trips the circuit it trips it operates the circuit breaker and it trips the transformer so this is the working of a buckles relay in the transformer first it will give you an alarm on a plus 65 and on a plus 80 it will do the tripping in the first alarm what do you do is you do not do the direct tripping on the first alarm you can do what you can turn on the forced cooling you know the forced cooling we've got a problem over here is that there is no proper cooling because the fans have aged they are old enough their rpms are not the same you don't go for proper maintenance and then the thing is that you have got uh, 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 dust very much dust over here so that is why uh, you know this is not an effective way right the second one is that you can you know spray water directly through the pipes they do it over here and then the third is that uh, you go for load shedding you go for load shedding. you can trip a number of feeders you can trip some feeders but again you've got what you've got some vip feeders which cannot be tripped so they go for you know general public load shedding and that is you know the solution over here if still if still load is coming then you have what you've got a fault basically and the most underlying fault is the most important thing that there is a short circuit somewhere and the most important uh, most common short circuits are the turn short circuits so basically the turn short circuits overheats the oil so over plus 65 alarm and on a plus 80 you would go for tripping and i believe that should be it that should be it or not so and and how do we check moisture so that is by a process called gas chromatography a few gases that are called furans are basically polyhydrogenic compounds which contain oxygen and carbon so oxygen takes place of carbon and uh, furan analysis is you check how much oxidation has taken place or how much oxidation oxygen based compounds have been formed how much oxygen based compounds have been formed and you know uh, we've got a mathematical formula for that and i will let you know over here uh, i will just write it over here that you've got the formula is that this is modeled by a differential equation and that is this thing the derivative of g of t plus p times s by v into g t and this is equal to p times s by v g M. so this is the mathematical model to see how much of oxidation has taken place where the book writes gt is the air content in the oil after any time t right this air content at any time t p is the probability the probability of absorption per unit time as is the surface area v is the volume and what do you have is gm is the maximum concentration maximum uh, air content that it can absorb or you know the saturation the saturation concentration air con air content under saturation condition so i believe that i will finish this video over here we we had a little general discussion over here about the transformer oil what happens when moisture comes in what happens when this air content the limits we discussed the breakdown we, let us have a little recap so the first is of course through the uh, uh, electron the high voltage uh, 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 application right 
very high field so avalanche region then what do you have is uh, formation of bubbles was the second one and they are formed due to what uh, to, due to uh, when the transformer overheats it gives up hydrogen gas uh, as a gas then you have you may have trapped oxygen there are corona type discharges which produces localized heating similarly overcoming the surface tension in the oil will also create bubbles so there are different mechanisms through which bubbles are formed and then when the bubble is formed so they are unstable you know and we discussed that it elongates under the action of electric field or you know many bubbles you know they nucleate together and uh, and they eventually bridge the gap between the electrodes and the short circuit path is achieved which is a low dielectric strength path than the bulk liquid dielectric and what is the precaution i would say for this the remedy now the precaution i would say is don't allow the form of bubbles make sure that these four to five things does not happen if they happen then you uh, do what you go for the gas chromatography techniques and filtering furan analysis etc similarly we have suspended particles in the transformer where do they come from so the fibrous materials they come from where the the winding material insulation that is cellulose paper bakelite or craft paper etc oil impregnated paper so from their wear and tear etc as the time goes on so fibrous materials start coming from that similarly the wear and tear of the metallic tank the metallic container so conducting particles come from there which and these particles get polarized under the action of electric field and what happens is they cling to the electrodes cling to the electrode the the the, the, the point uh, becomes concentrated the high uh, it gives rise to a local high field and what happens is more materials cling to the uh, to the previous materials eventually bridging the gap and a short circuit path is achieved so for this what is the uh, remedy or precaution is so for you go for the routine maintenance right you check the dielectric strength uh, 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 in in your whatever the prescribed routine for that is by the manufacturer similarly you go for filtering and all other techniques whatever are provided by the manufacturer so i believe uh, i finish this video over here we had a little general discussion on the transformer oil uh, it heats up the air cushion is provided buckles relay we talked about a little moisture is dangerous the air content is dangerous the breakdown we've already seen in the previous video the cooling of a transformer through the radiators pipes natural cooling forced cooling whatever it is i will see in the next video maybe we have uh, a number of numerical examples based on the just simple one or i'll just go directly to the solid insulation anyway still the next video take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye